Hello and welcome to St Michael's Hill. This week's video is going to be uh, a bit of a meet the fleet but uh, focusing on wagons so I guess it's a bit of a, a meet the wagon fleet. Um, I'm going to run through kind of every wagon type that I have. Um, whilst I might have multiple types of uh, certain wagons I'm only obviously going to show you one of each um, if there's any particular kind of notes or whatever I might uh, tell you as we go through but generally it's going to be a quick look at the different types of wagon that I've got in the fleet and the types of trains that I'm going to hopefully create using them and also I'll give you a little bit of a, a review or opinion on, on the wagons and tell you who they're manufactured by and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to try and go through in types so firstly starting with hopper wagons then um, tanker wagons uh, and then a bit more of a kind of a specialist uh, thing so whether it's nuclear flask or steel carriers or things like that they'll come through after that but I'm going to start off with the uh, the hopper wagons. So first up is this uh, MTA wagon uh, there's a few of these in my fleet uh, this particular example has been uh, weathered by me and uh, has had a bit of kind of graffiti added um, whilst it's something that I really don't like in real life uh, in terms of Graffiti, I obviously don't like to see it, I don't like what it means for the uh, railway companies, it's something that I do quite like to kind of uh, model just because it is part of the railway and I think uh, a layout without a bit of graffiti just doesn't quite look genuine. So yeah, this is something I've done. Um, it's a really nice wagon actually, there's a lot, lots of detail, uh, it runs really well and uh, generally it looks pretty good. When I was first starting on weathering and things like this it was wagons like this MTA that uh, were my kind of first victims I suppose it's, it's fairly easy to give it a bit of a light coat of uh, sleeper grime or uh, something like that and then add a little bit on. Um, when it came to the, uh, the transfers I made sure they go, went on first I think uh, it, it's kind of better that way um, but yeah, generally quite happy with the, how this looks and uh, generally uh, the wagon is, is a very nice one. Next up is the MFA wagon. Again, it's a, it's a backland wagon. This one's uh, in a uh, EWS branded load haul livery, uh, which is, puts it exactly the right sort of period for me, that kind of uh, crossover from uh, mainline load haul and transrail into EWS. So really nice kind of uh, tie in there. Again, I've weathered this one lightly myself, uh, just kind of taking a bit of the shine off it. I haven't got anything too heavy. Um, I think it's kind of fairly important when weathering to try and keep things a little bit minimal but basically the uh, the plan is to uh, make things look a bit more real rather than a toy. Again very happy with this wagon, there's some nice kind of detail down here, uh, it generally runs really well, and, uh, the build quality is really good. One thing I do need to do on this wagon is to uh, weather the inside a little bit. Um, at the time I was just kind of getting new to these things but I think uh, a bit of rust or something on the inside of the wagon is going to be uh, called for. Next up is the uh, ZKA or Limpet wagon. Um, it's part of my uh, departmental fleet. Again from Batman, another kind of uh, good model. Um, I'm not as keen on these as, as I am the uh, the uh, MEA and the MFA and the MTA wagons. Um, generally, they just look a little bit more, uh, I don't know, toy-like or, or it's just not as nice a design in my uh, opinion, but that's generally not uh, necessarily the fault of uh, Backman. I think it's just a wagon that's not quite as attractive. Um, again, this one needs to be weathered. Um, I'll probably go fairly heavy on this one. A lot of the uh, the fleet that's in this Dutch livery is going to be fairly heavily weathered, so I'll probably go to town on this one, um, giving it a very heavy weathering on the inside and, uh, and a fairly beaten up look on the outside as well. Um, but yeah, generally overall, it's a very nice wagon, runs very well, and uh, yeah, very happy with it. Next up is this uh, OAA wagon, um, a little bit older, uh, both in terms of a model and the prototype. So the uh, model is a Hornby one, and it's, uh, as you can see, one of the old ones with the large uh, D tension lock coupling. So I probably will need to look at that, get some sort of... Uh, NEM pocket fitted so I can uh, run it easier. I really don't like the way these uh, old couplings look. Um, the livery is uh, a rail freight livery which is probably going to be dating it kind of early 90s or late 80s. 
um, with kind of speed link type of services. So um, this one will probably be kind of weathered beyond uh, recognition in terms of a livery. Um, it's already had a light kind of coat on it. It looks fairly good, but I think uh, for it to fit in on the layout, I'm probably going to have to uh, get weathering it a lot harder. It maybe looked like one that uh, probably should have been uh, painted or whatever and hadn't been. So, yeah. So it's another, it's, it's a fairly okay model, especially for the time, it's not bad, but compared to the Batman models, it's uh, not, not quite in the same league. Next up is uh, another model from Batman, the OCA wagon. Um, again, I've weathered it very lightly and uh, I put a load in it. There was a load already in it. I'm not sure if you can see what's underneath the kind of uh, darker gray ballast there. It just didn't look great, so I've added some on top of it, although it's cracked away. I just need to touch that up a little bit. Uh, again, in the EWS livery, uh, so it fits in very well with the uh, time period that my layout's gonna be running. Um, as a Batman model, it's uh, got uh, NEM pockets. Should be said that I will at some point get round to fitting nearly all my uh, trains with a uh, KD couplings but for now many of them have got tension locks and it's just a case of uh, time and, and budget really. Um, I'll, I'll move them over slowly probably concentrating on uh, four rakes at a time and then um, that way you know the, the uh, trains will be kind of compatible with each other. But it's another another nice looking wagon um, very nice to have in the fleet. Next up on my uh, ZKV wagons, um, I did a video on these so I'm not going to talk too much about them, um, but they've obviously been weathered up um, both inside and out fairly heavily. Uh, each each wagon has been done kind of very differently, but uh, yeah, these ones are from Hornby. Uh, one thing I do still need to do with these is just weather up the wheels, they are obviously very shiny which doesn't look great. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's all I need to do. They've all got uh, KD couplings now. Um, I've fitted those on, removed the old uh, D uh, ones from Hornby and uh, fitted them pockets and KD. So really happy with these. Um, the video on how I did all this is uh, in the description above. Oh, sorry, in the I button above and in the description below. Next up is the uh, YCV Turbot Wagon. Uh, this one is a Kerno version. I know that uh, Dapol have just released one and uh, lots of people say that that one is uh, a little bit more accurate than this one. Um, however, I've got uh, a few of these now in a couple of different liveries um, and uh, I'm really impressed with the wagon generally. Um, I really like it. Uh, as with uh, a lot of the other fleet, this uh, Dutch version needs a good weathering. Um, probably really batter up a bit like the ones that uh, you can see there in the background. So uh, I'll kind of do that at some point, but yeah, generally it's a, it's a wagon I like a lot. There's a, a lot of detail um, and frankly, I don't know enough about many of these wagons to know that, uh, you know, if a couple of things are a few millimeters out, but yeah, it's a, it's a wagon that I really like and I'm glad I've got a few of them in the, uh, in the fleet. Next up, we've got the uh, ZFV, which is also known as a dogfish wagon. Um, these ones are from Dapol, I believe, and generally they're pretty good, but there are a few kind of weaknesses that I've kind of noticed. Um, firstly, the inside or the loads that these come with uh, are appalling. They really are bad, but uh, luckily the weathering underneath is, is fairly good. Um, I probably will make new loads for them, um, but yeah, it's the ones that they come with are shocking. The uh, bearings uh, are a little bit kind of maybe undersized or the axles are undersized so they kind of move around a little bit um, as you can see so it's not they're not the best in that front maybe uh, it'd be worth kind of uh, putting some new bearings in them and all that sort of stuff and the other thing is the couplings kind of droop a little bit it's probably fair to say sometimes it's a little bit difficult to couple up and as you can see this one they kind of a bit of play in them so yeah they look really nice wagons and obviously in a train they kind of work well i just wonder whether uh reliability wise they're going to be a little bit difficult but very very good looking wagon um and uh yeah the detail on them is immense so yeah it, pros and cons with these ones the penultimate uh, hopper wagon that uh, is in the fleet is this uh sea cow wagon from hornby this one's actually a pre-weathered version, um, which 
isn't bad. Uh, I think it probably could do with a little bit more uh, on top, but uh, yeah, it's not a bad wagon. Um, the levels of detail are pretty pretty good, and uh, it's kind of a, a fairly integral part of the uh, departmental fleet. So yeah, quite happy to have these on in on board. A very similar but uh, definitely different wagon is the uh, Sea Lion from Hornby. Again, uh, it's a very good model. If anything, it's slightly more detailed than the Sea Cow. Uh, a few more kind of rivet details, and then also the uh, the gubbins under here is is picked out a little bit more in depth. No, I don't know whether that's because that is the way of the prototype, and that, but it does seem like a little bit more of an in-depth and detailed wagon. This one needs uh, some very heavy weathering again with the uh, the Dutch fleet, so uh, something I'll be doing uh, over the next months. So moving on to tanker wagons now. Um, the first thing we have here is the uh, Hornby TTA. Now these started life uh, as the kind of red Texaco or yellow shell wagons that a lot of people have seen. And uh, I basically kind of resprayed them uh, and, and given them a little bit more detail. So uh, I painted the underframe, get that kind of red in there um, and then uh, resprayed the whole of the body in uh, gray and then given them some weathering. And in this case, obviously, uh, some graffiti and, and finished it off with the uh, the uh, decals from uh, I think it was Railtech um, so kind of all the warnings of the uh, running number and all that sort of stuff the only thing that these need is uh, a ladder uh, to go on here the other thing that I tried at the time and uh, just completely messed up really uh, is to add couplings using uh, paper clips and things like that which in theory work um, but they're just a bit of a pain and I didn't do it accurately enough uh, for them to all work with whichever wagon so um, I will remove these and add uh, NEM pockets again and, and allow them to run with KDs. Very happy with them as a fleet though I've got quite a few of these They're probably the most uh, I've got of a single wagon so I think I've got maybe 12 of these that have all been converted to some degree uh, it's just a case of finishing them all off but uh, many of them are in the state where they've been resprayed and just waiting to be weathered um, there are one or two that are still kind of in this state so uh, certainly on the new layout I'll be running fairly long trains of these and uh, yeah very happy with them next up is this uh, TEA wagon from Backman um, it's one of the older uh, TEA wagons so the kind of first uh, batch, so uh, the kind of older prototype. Um, it's a decent wagon, and uh, until recently I've kind of been very happy with it and uh, generally, you know, very pleased to have it as part of the fleet. It's the only one I have. I picked it up, I think, secondhand from Rails of Sheffield. Um, and yeah, it's generally a nice model. There's a little bit of paint missing on the other side of it, so just need to uh, sort that out at some point, uh, either by covering it with weathering or, or something similar. But uh, yeah, generally it's a fairly nice wagon. Next up is the uh, TA from Revolution. Uh, now when I say I was happy with the uh, other one until recently, uh, it's basically because of this. This one blows it out of the water. It's a beautiful model. Um, I won't talk too much about it because I did a full review of this. So uh, click on the i button now um, if you want to see the full review of that video. But uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful um, wagon, um, lovely tooling. The uh, livery is amazing, and uh, yeah, super pleased with these in the fleet. So moving away from tankers now to slightly more specialised uh, wagons. This is the uh, BRA wagon, uh, and is the latest to join the fleet. So I got a couple of these second hand recently. Um, basically, they are to carry steel. They're uh, in real life telescopic, so they can open up. Um, and, and carry kind of uh, a lot of steel now. These are going to be very useful for the new layout once I uh, tell you where it's based. Um, it's definitely an area that had a lot of steel traffic um, back then and still to this day. So this one's in the EWS livery. Um, it's been weathered. I'm not sure if it's a factory weathering. It looks like it probably could be, but uh, if not, it's been applied very nicely and very subtly. The uh, level of detail is, is wonderful. Um, and generally it's a, it's a great wagon all around. Next up we've got the uh, male wagons or vans. Um, 
they're actually both from different manufacturers. So this one here is a Backman uh, release, and as you'd expect, the kind of levels of detail are very good. The uh, coupling is a modern NEM pocket one, um, generally all good. The one on the left here is an older Lima version, um, which has the old kind of decoupling. So I'll replace that at some point with a uh, an NEM pocket, and uh, I'll be able to kind of uh, put KDs in or smaller tension lock couplings. And, uh, and run them together. It would be good to kind of get a closer coupling than that, to be honest. Um, but hopefully that can be achieved at the same time. Um, these will obviously make up a, a parcels rake. Uh, I've got uh, what, two of each of these, uh, which should give her a kind of nice small rake with a uh, class 47. Um, often these run in uh, basically rakes of four which often were doubled up to eight so I'll probably keep it at four for now and uh, model a smaller smaller poster working. Next up is the uh, cargo wagon from Hellyam. Um, I'll keep this fairly brief because I did a whole video about this wagon and the installation of the uh, end of train light um, but it's a really nice wagon. Uh, it's a little bit more flimsy than I thought it would be but uh, Saying that the uh, the levels of detail is really nice and it's uh, it's a really imposing wagon. Hopefully, I can get a couple more of these at some point and, uh, and run a slightly bigger train. Luckily, they uh, in the period I kind of uh, model ran often with some steel carriers and things like that, so I can probably build a nice little train out of these uh, as I have them already. Next up is a uh, I guess a firm favourite of a lot of modellers is the FNA nuclear flask wagon um, by Backman. I think a lot of people really like these because it means they can run a prototypical, very short train uh, with a couple of these behind uh, a couple of locos. And uh, obviously that's something that uh, a lot of people like because of uh, space always being an issue with model railways. Uh, it's a very, very nice wagon, um, nice levels of detail, and it's just a very kind of characterful wagon a lot of people kind of instantly recognise it as, uh, as as nice. So yeah, I've given it a bit of a weathering, kind of try to keep it fairly light, to be honest, just a little bit of kind of splatter of mud and all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, generally it's uh, it's a nice little wagon. Um, I say that most people run it just a couple behind a uh, couple of logos. I, I plan to do it a little bit differently, uh, as a lot of you already know. So um, yeah, the next wagons will show you what I mean. So I intend to run my nuclear flask wagon with these, which are RNA nuclear flask barrier wagons. Um, until probably the late 90s, uh, instead of running uh, behind multiple uh, locos, these uh, flasks would run behind a single loco and then in between two barrier wagons and then have a brake van on the end. So um, I built these, or I scratch built these or converted these from um, hopper wagons um, and again, there's a, a little video series on how I did that, so I'll link to that below. But I am really, really pleased with these. Just something a bit different than not everyone else has, so it's always nice to have. And uh, if you want to see these running in uh, a train with the uh, flask and a brake van, then uh, check out the video where I visited uh, Richard at New Junction, and you'll see these running behind my Class 37. So uh, the barrier wagons and the flask run with this uh, brake van. It's a CAR model from uh, Backman. Again, I fitted in end of train light. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with how that kind of came together. I've removed the coupling from the rear just because the way I'm going to be running it will be in a fixed formation with the uh, the train behind. And, and that's how it goes together with the, uh, with the uh, brake van on the end. So yeah. Very happy with this. Uh, it's kind of been again weathered just to match these, really, nothing too heavy, but uh, it all kind of comes together quite nicely. And we're on to the uh, final two wagons now. Um, both of them kind of are intermodal wagons. The, the first of which is this, uh, I think it's an MTA, uh, basically, it's a pocket wagon. Um, now, these were originally developed for running uh, oversized containers on the UK network which has got a loading gauge that is smaller than a lot of European and other things like that. Um, however most of the time these days you just see them uh, running with standard containers inside them. Um, they generally run on Freightliner only services 
Um, and, and yeah, it's a very, very nice wagon. This one's from Dapol, I believe. Um, really nice levels of detail and uh, yeah, all over, very, very nice. Um, these will be weathered up very heavily. Normally when you see them, they are just absolutely filthy. Uh, they obviously run very low to the ground and uh, yeah, they're not cleaned at all. So whilst if you look very closely, you can sometimes see what color they used to be. They're just usually a very kind of uh, matte kind of muddy color um, all over. So that's something I'm gonna try and achieve um, on this wagon. The final wagon in the fleet is this Hornby KFA uh, container wagon. Um, again, in tip hook livery. Uh, very, very nice wagon these from Hornby. Um, it's probably until Backman's recent release, uh, probably one of the best uh, container wagons around. The uh, chassis or the body is all metal, which gives it a nice kind of look. And if you remove the containers, you can kind of see right through it, which is always a nice kind of touch. It's something a little bit different. Obviously, you can run these unloaded or loaded, and it uh, gives it quite a nice kind of look. So. Yeah, very, very cool wagon. Um, very happy with it as well. I think the, uh, the guys at Hornby really nailed this one. So I've got a few of these. My plan is to run these in a intermodal train alongside the uh, pocket wagon at the back. And at some point I'll, uh, I'll pick up a few of the recent back one releases. Uh, it'll be kind of a, a fairly decent length train then for the new layout. So that's pretty much all of the, the wagons on uh, or in the fleet. I'm going to leave you with a few shots of some of them running, um, being shunted around the yard. And uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I understand it's been a bit different to something that I've done recently, but uh, hopefully you found some of that interesting. And uh, I'll see you again soon on St. Michael's Hill. Goodbye. As always, thank you for watching. If you want to see more from me, uh, click on the video on the top left hand side. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right hand side. I'll see you again next week on St. Michael's Hill. Thank you and goodbye.